called the ancient forest, and the trees in that forest are around the same size as the ones to our left, but they're about 700 years old. Wow. So they're some of the oldest trees actually in the province of Alberta. Now, on our left-hand side, this is actually very lucky for any day, but uh, you guys, this dirt is ice, which means that the road ahead of us is constantly moving and shifting up to two meters or six feet every year to the right and down into the valley. So you'll see it's a bit of a roller coaster ride from here on in. Do it again? Lots more to come. All right, guys, we're just about to pull into the Ice Explorer Bay. I took pictures of everything. We'll record later, right? Yeah. I took it all the way in. I took it all the way in. I took it all the way in. I took it all the way Amelia, we're going down a really steep hill. All right, can everybody see where we're about to go? Really steep. <laughs> right Everybody hang on. Yeah, there's only one way to the glacier, and that's to go down. So we're going to head down in just a second. I want to point out a few things while we're up top here. So right in front of us, this huge body of ice is called the Athabasca Glacier. So this is everything you see in front of us. This is uh, all part of the glacier. Now there's another body of ice called the Columbia Ice Field. And if you look to your far left, you'll see the glacier starts to slope up and it looks like there are kind of three stairs or three steps made of ice. So that's a part of the glacier. At the very top of that third step, we can see just a bunch of snow and then we just see the sky. And right where that snow sits, that's where the Columbia Ice Field sits. So it's way, way higher up. You guys will hear me talk about both of them as we head a bit farther. All right, so does everyone trust me? Yes. Okay, good, because you don't really have a choice. All right, so we're heading down the second steepest unpaved road in all of North America. It's the first steepest. It's in Pikes Peak, Colorado. That's where the steepest is. So this road is about a 32% grade or 18 degree incline. And the impressive part is I'm able to head most of the way down the hill uh, with my foot on the gas pedal. So what we're using instead of the brakes to slow us down is a special mechanism called a transmission lockup. So it's pretty easy for me. All I have to do with the front here is press a button, and the transmission is doing the most of the work for us to keep us going nice and slowly. Now I do use my brakes a little bit, but it is the bus that's doing most of the work to keep us slow here. Now this is a very, very special bus. There are only 23 of these buses in the entire world, and 22 of them are owned by Brewster, and we use them here for the tours. So the only other one is owned by the United States, actually, and they use it in Antarctica. It's used to shuttle people back and forth from uh, the airport and a research station there. But other than that, we've got all the buses here. We use them for tours. We've been using them uh, since the late 80s. It's the third type of vehicle we used uh, here for the tours. So we're just going to pull off to the side for a second, everyone, and let this, uh, this bus come up uh, down on our left, and then we'll keep going. Why are people walking down the So she asked, why are people walking down on the glacier? So they're doing a different kind of tour called an ice walk, and it's a guided tour that starts at the very bottom of the glacier. Sorry, my brakes are going to be a bit squeaky here. So they started at the very, very bottom of the glacier down uh, to our right, and they head it up and down. It takes about four hours. They walk all the way up. The they don't go all the way up. There yeah. is a guided tour that does go all the way up to the bottom of that first step, um, but it's not run today. But they're with uh, certified and ice walking experts. And so they'll get to stop and look down into some different uh, crevasses. They get a lot of the same types of information that I'll be giving you today, but they just look at it a little bit uh, more up close. Now back to the buses. These are very, very unique vehicles. It costs about $1.2 million to make one of these buses. And they are made right here in Canada, just a few hours away in Calgary. Now, of course, for a special bus like this, you do need special tires as well. So the six tires that you'll see on each bus are called Terra tires, just like the Terra bus. So they're about five feet tall. They cost uh, $5,000 per tire. And what's really special about them is they have a lot less air pressure than a regular tire, so they feel a lot softer in a way. So only 15 or 16 psi of air pressure per tire. 
Alright, so I think Jason probably told you a few things about the area on your way up. You probably heard him mention the word moraine a few times. So moraine is a big pile of rock and dirt and debris that's been left behind as the glacier has moved. Now what's really cool about this part of the tour, and that you probably don't realize, is that right now we are already on top of the Athabasca Glacier. So the reason that you can't tell is underneath us there's a layer of rock that's covering up the ice underneath. And uh, that rock is only about two or three feet thick. The ice that's directly below it is about 30 meters or almost 100 feet thick, right below us here. And we call this the ice core moraine, since there's that layer of ice that's hidden on the inside. Now the ice core moraine is made up of like, all of the rock and debris that's fallen down from the mountains uh, up to our left. And it goes all the way down the entire length of the glacier. And this darker rock is hiding the ice underneath, so we find that the ice on the sides of the glacier melts a little bit slowly than, uh, than what's in the middle. So we're just going through a little bit of our makeshift booster tire wash just to rinse any extra mud or rocks and things like that off our tires before we head it onto the ice. And right about now we've transferred on to the surface of the Athabasca Glacier. So you'll see in a lot of spots today we got a lot of fresh snow uh, this morning and uh, late last night. So the glacier looks a little bit whiter than it did yesterday. Now before I was talking about the glacier and the ice field and how they're two separate things. 